Hi, everybody. You know, it's interesting. I can't help but think lately how fortunate I am to live in a time when I can reinvent myself at my advanced age in life, or <laughs> that wonderful, wonderful line from the movie, The Bucket List, at this advanced stage of wisdom. I like that. In any case, I have had no choice in many, many ways, but to find new ways to bring money into the house to be able to live and pay my bills. Because after my surgery, the extent of damage to my leg and my, uh, my walking was problematic. I wound up losing my femoral nerve, so hard to lift my leg in certain ways, and I feel less safe when I am walking. Um, I feel a lot less safe when I walk up and down stairs when there is no railing. Never thought about that before. I had a girlfriend that I worked with for years in real estate, her name was Ann. And Ann had this fear of walking up and down stairs. Sadly, in her case, I think, I think she had a premonition because she in fact died very young by falling into the water when she was trying to get on her husband's boat. So I never understood it on a deep emotional level because I couldn't relate to it. I didn't have that problem. And I think that's interesting for all of us because we can commiserate, we can empathize with somebody, but if you don't know the pain that they're feeling or the fear that they experience, really hard to grasp exactly what it is they're going through. And as I say, for me, it's, it's really interesting. The reason it comes up for me today is because I met a client today to show them, I started showing them houses. It's, um, it's an old time client daughter. I watched her grow up and to see her and her boyfriend at this point looking for their first house is very exciting for me to be part of that journey. So I'm happy to do it, but the things that I took for granted are astounding. The first house that we went to was in a great area, something that I thought they might be interested in, and it certainly had the potential to ful fulfill a lot of their needs. So I met them at the house, and as I sat there, I kind of had to laugh because I, I realized what a challenge it was going to be for me to get them into that house. It had a, well, to get up to the property, there were two steps with no railing because the property went uphill. And then you had to walk on this pathway up to, sorry about that, I'm hand holding this. And it's, it's, it's just not working so well. In any case, they had, um, they had come a little bit earlier than I did. And I was sitting there looking at it thinking, how am I gonna navigate this? So it was those two steps in the front. And then there were three steps, almost looked like a sandcastle. It looked as if somebody stuck the steps on as an afterthought. They were not that wide. They were not that deep. I have big feet. And they, um, they had no railing anywhere. So I finally said, you know, I, I have to stop being, I have to stop having, letting it make me feel embarrassed or as if there is something inherently 
wrong with me in the sense that it makes me less than or incapable of or what will people think? It is my reality. So I finally said, you know, I'm gonna have a problem with those stairs and unless I take my cane, which I don't wanna do, if I could grab your arm when we go up the stairs, that would be terrific because without a railing, I feel insecure. They were great about it. They really were. Um, I don't think they had any particular negative thoughts about it, but you never know how somebody is perceiving you. But I, could, I couldn't have better people to, to be working with. I adore both of them. And they're just the sweetest, kindest human beings. So I'm blessed in that way. But it's an interesting thing. And it just shows as we go on, it reminds me of my girlfriend, Mary. Mary and I were very, very close friends. We, we felt like sisters, really. And she was quite a bit older than I was, and it made no difference whatsoever. But she always used to say, because she got there so much before I did, that growing old was not for sissies. And boy, is she right. I try not to think about it because in truth, most of the time, I don't feel it. I don't significantly feel the changes, or I should say, I don't significantly enough feel the changes that it is worrisome for me. It's not. But after the surgery, I had some issues and I have to deal with them. So I have come to the point in my life, I think, where it is, I am who I am and my capabilities and my inabilities and my fears and my concerns and my insecurities, they're all part of who I am, which is really true of all of us at any stage of our lives. So we just have to accept us with all our frailties and just love ourselves. I have to tell you lately, once again, I have, I tend to reach for the spiritual side of myself and the spiritual side of life whenever facing any difficult times. And I'm sure that's true for a lot of people. I find myself listening lately again to Louise Hay, who was a wonderful, wonderful speaker, writer, motivator, health coach, you name it, she did it. And um, so much of what she had to say is so relevant for all of us, certainly for me at this point. And I get, I get a lot of, I get a lot of, I don't know what to call it, not relief. It just makes me know Number one, I'm not that different. And number two, it's okay. It's okay. I also have started listening to, for quite a while now, Abraham Hicks. And the interesting thing is, I had bought a book many years ago, and I never, I never read it. So it was a book about uh, Abraham Hicks. And I don't know how many of you know the story, but I will actually put a few of her videos up on the channel because I want to share it with you. I think it will resonate with some of you. Some of you perhaps not, but for th those that it will, I think it's, it's just really wonderful. It's wonderful because the truth is we are all of us spiritual beings experiencing a human life. And I'm grateful for the life that I have with all the things that have gone wrong. So many, many, many things have gone right. And I've had some great people in my life. And I, I have to tell you, I, I lost my brother in December. And it, it, that was so hard to deal with. My brother 
was in my life from the day I was born. He was already here. So I never had a single day of my life when Marty wasn't part of it. And I have to tell you, in the last number of years, he was so empathetic, caring, wanting to make it better. Let me put it to you this way. My brother Marty took his role as the older brother very seriously. And I miss him terribly. When I was in the hospital last time, he called me every single day. We spoke on the phone for anywhere from a half hour to an hour and a half every single day. There were always things to talk about. There were memories to share. And he just made me feel better. The fact that he was also a clinical psychologist and, you know, counseling and, and uh, treating people for all kinds of issues and, and working a lot with an aging population as he got more older in his practice or in the latter years of his practice, he had a lot of older patients. And he always said to me, he said, Jerry, it's really hard for people because there are so many things you have to face and it's harder to face them. And often you're facing them alone or you're facing them not knowing where you're headed, either immediately or longer term. And he was just there. He was just there every single day. When I felt, when I got down on myself, he would not really let me. He would tell me it's normal to feel the way you do and it you're going through a tough time. And I just miss him so much. I am rambling. I am absolutely rambling and I have no idea if any of you want to hear this ramble. So I guess I, I guess I'll put it up there and uh, if you want to, if you're interested in it, stick around and watch. If you're not, by all means, wait for the next one. This one is just Jerry. Stream of consciousness. That's what it's all about. So my friends, here I am back again <laughs> and we'll take it day by day see where it takes us. I really want to share with you some of the things that I've been doing to survive and how interesting it's been to learn new things. So I always enjoy that. And I think that's one of my gifts that I really enjoy learning every single day of my life. Any day that I learn something new is a good day. So I'm going to, I'm going to steal a line from my dear friend, Sheila. And I'm going to say it's a good day to have a good day. So I hope you all do that. Love you all. Happy to be back. And hopefully we'll get more structured. Take care. Bye-bye.